Hi, I'm Izzy and this is BigLeaf.fit. This is the beginner's yoga series and in today's practice we'll be using the chair again for a more gentle practice. So on day two we use the chair and we stand and we don't really sit in the chair but today's practice we will be sitting in the chair. So I still recommend that you place the chair on a yoga mat or on a sturdy surface so that your chair will not move. We'll be starting in the chair with the feet on the floor. If your feet do not touch the floor, that's where you can use those yoga blocks again to make the floor come closer to you. So you can easily have your feet resting on the yoga blocks. And we'll start with just our hands on our lap. As we let the hands fall heavy, we wanna let the shoulders relax and the elbows fall heavy so that we sink into ourselves instead of this upright tension. So we're trying to let go of the tension and we wanna let go of it all through the spine so that we have just enough sturdiness to sit. We can start with just squeezing the shoulders up towards the ears and then roll them back and down. Most of us are seated all day with this forward hunch. And so we wanna start guiding the shoulders back and down. See if you can engage as much of those muscles behind the heart as possible. So up, squeeze and rolling down. And you're more than welcome to close your eyes or just let your eyes fall heavy. So you could just look at the floor we're just going to continue to do this for a few more moments. Look up and squeeze. See if you can engage the muscles, the muscles sliding down the back. You might feel them guide down the spine. Let's do that one more time. And take a big exhale, just inhale through the nose, and then open up the mouth and just like you've had a hard day, and you just need to let that sigh of relief. Let's try it one more time. In through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Good. And then from our chair, we're just gonna warm up our core. So we're lifting up the heels coming onto the toes. Now we could do that and just use the leg, but we're gonna use the core with it. So tightening up your core muscles and then relax. Tightening up the core muscles and relax. So if you're not tightening up the core enough, you might just feel it in the hips. We really want to get a little burning sensation in a good way. It's just we feel that muscle being activated. And we'll take an exhale and relax on that inhale. Exhale, pushing out all of the old air and then relaxing. And so as we continue to do that, our exhale might get loud. So we might do this. And so this is what we call pranayama and yoga. So when we use that breath to create more muscle movement or more internal movements, so again, just the heels are lifting. We're mainly focusing on the belly. So if your calves are getting really sore, see if you can focus more on the belly doing the movement. Let's do that two more times. Good. And then we'll try the opposite of picking up the toes. We'll feel the shins start to engage, and we might start to feel the hips, but we wanna try again to engage that core. So we might even feel this curling inward movement. Relax the toes, big exhale. And if you want to, you can add the hands along with it. So just like you had a big beach ball sitting in your lap, you're giving it a big squeeze, engage the core, and then loosening up. We don't let the beach ball roll away, but just enough to relax. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, and if we keep the elbows in, we might feel that chest opening and the muscles in the back squeezing again. So exhale, toes up, everything is curling in, and we open, toes come down, inhale, open. Exhale, toes come up, curl in, tighten the belly, and then open up, everything starts to soften. One more time. So we've gotten the core warmed up and that's important to make sure that we're using that core as we move through our movements and that we're not stemming everything from the lower back. Because most likely, 
if you find yourself craving a cheer practice, it's normally because your back gets aggravated pretty easy. Mine does as well because I also have that tendency to use my back and I have to constantly remind myself to use the core. The good news is, is the more that we engage the core, we're teaching it that we want to use it. So you might have to remind yourself a lot in the beginning, but eventually the body picks up on that, that habit, that craving, and it'll start to do it on its own. And then we get that flat abs look, or at least we're not as puffy, right? So let's begin to add the arms in. As we lift the arms, again, engage that belly. So that belly button is pulling up and in. And then we can exhale to soften. So our breath's a little bit different than what we were just doing because since we're extending the hands up, we need the support of the core. So this is our ex or this is our inhale, and then this is our exhale. So we're creating a little bit of pressure, but we're lifting up, we're inflating the lungs. Tighten up the core and then exhale, soften. Inhale up. And then exhale, soften. And feel that core after you do it a few times and you start to get comfortable with it. You might forget again, and that's okay. That's part of being a beginner. And sometimes we can be a beginner for years. We're gonna have certain tendencies that we're just going to struggle with. I struggle with tendencies as well, and I have to remind myself as I teach. Inhale, reach up. take our seated cat cow so just the hands come onto the knees and we will get this big lift of the chest opening of the collarbone we'll get an arch but as we arch we want to make sure that we're not just dumping into the lower back so I'm gonna turn so you can see me you stay where you're at and so instead of just dumping we want to make this big chest open so it's focused on the chest opening and again squeezing behind the heart the lower back shouldn't feel a whole lot. It should only be a tiny little stretch. And then as we exhale, we're gonna round ourselves over. Think like a Halloween cat. So we wanna arch the full spine. So not just the lower back, not just the belly pulling in, but also through that upper back that most likely is getting underutilized as well. And then we'll take this to our breath. Inhale up chest exhale pulling through the belly but towards the mid of the stomach feel the shoulders pull away we might even feel like we're reaching towards our knees inhale reach up and exhale round now another option you might like is the hands on the back of the chair push into the chair squeeze inward and then open up the chest like it's a really big lift and we want to make sure again as we open through the throat we're not dumping into the neck as well so we don't want to dump we want activation we want support yoga is strengthening and it's sometimes more strengthening than stretching um, there is a stretch that's happening but there's a lot of strength that's added into it and that's how we get into what we call stretches a little bit deeper it's actually by adding the strength and the muscle activation that's causing this movement or this posture to look even bigger. So if I just dumped into it, this could really stress my back, stress my neck. But if I push and open and I activate the core and I squeeze the back muscles, and even I'm squeezing my glutes and my hips, and I'm opening up, I'm stretching through the neck, and then it feels so good to relax and release and move it into the other direction. And then once I do relax and relief and move it into the other direction, I'm then gonna to start to activate from here. So the belly pulls in, the muscles pull away from the spine and I'm reaching, I'm activating, I'm releasing the neck and head, I'm breathing into it. And then let's take a couple practice rounds of just doing that again. So the inhale, push and open, activate the body. And then exhale, slight release as you're transitioning, and then activate into the cat. And as we sink into this, we'll feel less effort because we're getting used to it. So let's take it to breath. Exhale, inhale. And if you need to move through it a little bit slower than I am, that is perfectly welcome. Even if you were to attend a yoga class in person, 
always feel welcome to take a slightly slower pace than everyone else. I know sometimes that can be scary, kind of moving to your own tune, but yoga teachers, a good yoga teacher will appreciate you doing that and they'll see it as almost an advanced practice that you're honoring your body. And then let's go of that, release it out. I always welcome wiggling because if we're holding on to tension that's not wanted, it's not desired, then we should shake it and wiggle it out make sure that we are in control. Now here we'll be doing a modified lunge. So I'm gonna open up one knee and I'm gonna scoot towards the front of my chair just so that that one hip and thigh is on the chair. Well, the front one, you can stretch out through the toes or you can let that knee fall as heavy as you'd like. It'll be a slightly different feel either way you do it. So I like to push because that's what we would be doing if we were standing. If that feels extremely uncomfortable, then just let that knee soften a little bit. So we're getting a big stretch through our psoas. This is really important because the psoas is running through all of the digestive organs and the reproductive organs, especially for us females. So that when this gets really tight from this constant sitting and we're not walking, because this opens up a lot when we're walking, then we can cause a lot of um, indigestion, digestion problems, fertility issues, and even low back pain. So this is a really important one. And we'll breathe into it because again, if you're not used to stretching it, it can be really tight and you might have your knee bent. And again, that is okay. So the more you do it, the more it'll open up. So just allow yourself to breathe, opening. And then we'll start to take that cat cow again. So that knee will lift the chest. Exhale, tuck the belly, and you might even get a big push. Again, take it easy. Your exhale might not be as big as mine because I'm used to doing this. Inhale up. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, pull up. Exhale, pull in. Now you can add to this. You can place your hands on your knee and move up and in. You can place your hands on your hips and move up and in. And you might do it just a little bit and you need a break and you can rest and just breathe. Steady breath, not holding the breath, just a steady breath. And then maybe we open up into it again. So one of my experiences utilizing this posture, keep going with the inhale up, exhale in, is that I always had um, irregular menstruation cycles. And I noticed in yoga, we did about a month or two months of really focusing on opening up the psoas and I didn't realize how tight mine was. And this was just a year ago. And I've been doing yoga for 12, 13 years. And after I did it, I really felt open. I started feeling some movement happening in my digestive system and a bunch of things going on, just really diving into just working on the psoas. And then let's go ahead and relax that side. Take a moment as you come back to center. And then just feel the difference. Notice your lower back, notice your hip, notice your knee. So we stretched out the quad a little bit. And then we're gonna to transition to the other side. Dropping through. And again, you might have to steady yourself. That's why the chair is great. You can always use the back of the chair. And again, take your time so we did not move straight into that breath. First, we just let ourselves position, hold, and just regular breathe. And so I started feeling all of this movement happening, and then suddenly I started having regular cycles. Um, and so my personal problem was that I had so much tension here that it was restricting and causing a lot of pressure within my ovaries and uterus and, and all of those areas, along with digestive issues. So every time I might be a few days late for my period, I normally will take some time and really work on this for a few days and normally I'll get back on my cycle. And then I began incorporating that into like the week before I was supposed to start, I would start doing more of this psoas stretching. So 
very useful tip for the ladies. So let's add that breath, inhale, reach up. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, pull up. side is obviously a little tighter for me which is that part of yoga is coming to it as this daily practice is awareness and sometimes surprise but it's not to be judgmental of yourself it is to realize things that are going in the body that we might not have realized otherwise so I'm like very surprised today that this this hip and this psoas is very tight uh, much tighter than I realized yesterday. So I must have done something and I'm really glad I'm doing this so that I am loosening that up. In through the chest, out through the belly. Again, you might get a really big open, just make sure that you're not dumping and then curling in will feel through it. And if you do feel the urge to hold in one of these postures and just breathe, deep steady breaths. And so a deep steady breath might be that inhale for one, two, three. Four, exhale for one, two, three, four. Just an even heart breath. We'll hold here for just a little bit longer and just notice little things. So if you're feeling a ton in the glutes, you might need to add some more squats. If you are feeling a ton here in the quad, again, you might need some more squats. Um, squats are a very healthy thing and you don't have to make it a big movement, um, which I'll show you here shortly. It can be very little, it can be just activating the muscle. Let's take one more deep breath. And then softening, take it easy because we did just open that up. Slow movements. Adjusting and supporting as we come back to center. And then just notice how you're feeling. Notice the hips, again, I always love the wiggles. So that rocking movement is very soothing for the nervous system. We're going to take our toes out so the knees are open. And we're just going to place our hands on the knees. So the first one we're going to do is just stretching the ribs. And so my shoulder drops in and I should feel the stretch through the rib. I'm going to turn slightly. And depending on the flexibility of your spine, you might turn a lot. Just turn to where you start to feel that tension and then breathe into the tension. Breathe into that rib. So I might feel it a little bit more in the back. And so we might feel the ribs opening and closing because in between the ribs are muscles that need to be stretched as well. And then I'm gonna release my neck because I wanna gently come out of this as I then drop the other shoulder in, bringing the sides tighter. Breathing into the rib. And what could that, could that be? That could just be the way I slept. Um, it could be the way I sat all day yesterday. Um, it could be multiple things. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong. It just means that you need some resetting from the day before. Again, you can turn the head, releasing, coming back to center. Now this is another activation. So I'm gonna have my hands on the inside of the thighs. I am not pushing my legs open. I am creating a door stop. So I will have resistance to prevent my legs from coming in. I'm going to squeeze my legs in, which would move like this, but my hands are creating that resistance to make sure they stop. I'm gonna squeeze, and again, you might get really shaky. That's a good thing in this scenario because if your hips are uneven, it's going to help create evening them out. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now as you're squeezing, make sure you're breathing so you don't want to hold the breath. And then soften, relax. Let's do that again. Push into the thighs, thighs push into the hands. We're creating that tension. You might feel it all down your arms. You're gonna feel your glutes squeezing. See if you can relax the glutes a little bit and just squeeze the inner thighs. Or if you're not squeezing the glutes, give that a try. So this is play time. And essentially that should be, like if you go to a group class, I hope that you can have fun if you're playing and you're experimenting with your body. Relax. I'm gonna do it one more time. 
deep breath. And then hands on the thighs, push and squeeze. Notice your tendency and try the opposite. You know, I had broken my foot and I did not have a lift in the other shoe. And so I got really used to walking and my hips started evening out and relax. And then once I took the boot off, my hips were really uneven. And I would have to do this to help reset my hips. And depending on the extent of how much your body adapted to that, um, it can cause a lot of back pain and hip pain and things like that. So notice little things like it's normally injuries that can leave us offset and yoga can really help with creating that symmetry in the body so that we can begin to move healthily. Now when we don't have that symmetry in the body is when we get these uneven um, and when we get these uneven components within the body is when we're more prone to injury. So if it's like, I got this injury, and then I got that injury, and then I got that injury, they're all just furthering each other if we're not spending that time to even them out. And essentially that is when yoga therapy and corrective alignment can come in to play to help that out. Now yoga therapy is more than just corrective alignment because yoga therapy goes into supporting diseases and conditions as well. So like cancer and recovering from that, stress management, um, things that we might not be able to just get back to perfect alignment and be in a perfect healthy state, not that you cannot from any of those, um, but yoga therapy is more to support you through it. Um, and then corrective alignment therapy is where you're working on balancing the chakras and you're working on bringing yourself back into alignment to really self heal with the placebo effect um, and also physically um, bringing things in. And so placebo effect is a beautiful thing. If you don't know much about it, um, I will make a video for you, but also Google it. Um, it means the physician within. So it's your ab ability to heal yourself. And so that's what I'd like us to do as we rest. Um, you can sit back in the chair, so leaning back, or you can sit up tall and feel that core pull in. You might lift your toes or lift your heels to feel that activation. Then you can have the hands up or the hands down and just invite in the possibility of healing yourself. So if you have one hip that feels really healthy and another hip that doesn't, or maybe it's a foot, a wrist, whatever it might be, channel into what the healthy one feels like and really get to know that feeling of health and symmetry and feeling good because a lot of times we get focused on the negative and so allow yourself to get focused on the positive and then see once you feel that feeling if you can wrap that into the other side. See if you can start to create just the feeling. See if this side was to feel good, that's what it would feel like. And you might even imagine, if you can, the muscles and the tendons being repaired. You can imagine sending ohms or amens or hallelujahs to that area. Or you might imagine little scrubbers coming in and scrubbing it and cleaning it up. You might imagine taking some healing ointment polishing all of those tendons and muscles and creating evenness and health. And as you do that, notice how much tension or doubt you hold into the body. And see if you can breathe in the confidence and the trust. We'll take two more deep breaths here. our fingers and toes and you can even take a big stretch if you'd like to take a big stretch and bring yourself back in thank you
you so much for practicing with me on this day three of beginner series. I hope that you will spend more time with me by pushing the subscribe and the bell button on the YouTube channel. You can also spend more time with me in my free Facebook group. Um, and I would love to see you and hear your comments and comment back to you on all of your health, wellness, and nourishment goals. And then if you'd like to really have a deep dive, 90 day immersion to just radically transform your life, you can go on to balancedgoddesschat.com and book a free chat with me to talk about how we can map out your amazing transformation, like letting go of pain, suffering, excuses, all of that, and really just like step in to a divine goddess life. I'm Izzy. Thank you so much for watching.